And now, with thanks to Bright Ideas Lighting, Talbot Avenue at Lone. Building or renovating? They work with you to create a bespoke lighting plan for your home. Brightideas.ie. Whether booking Turkish Airlines flights to Istanbul or popping in here for his weekly verbal duel, he's never shy about being our DIY guy. Now, Brian, it's time to take Will to school. Mr. Fix-It. Morning. Good morning. I will not be going for a hair transplant, I'm afraid. I probably should. Well, but I, if I was... the Irish Independent today. Okay. 100,000 hair transplants a year are performed in Istanbul. Right. And so much so that Turkish Airlines are rebranding as Turkish Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> Might have made the last bit up. Yes, that is a real dad joke. However, do your, do your kids roll their eyes at your jokes? Stuart Heritage would like to talk to you because he has just written his new book and he was hoping you might endorse it. It's called Bald. How I slowly learned not to hate having no hair and you can too. Yeah, I think I've adjusted to that. Yeah. It's okay, Sinead. I don't need water. It's grand. Thank you. I asked nicely. Did you? You should try it. Yeah, well, I I don't need water, Sinead. Thanks, thanks. That's grand. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. if hand signals could translate on radio. <laughs> it's before the watershed. Right, let's get down to business because DIY for the next 40 minutes. Pick your brain, um, Mr. Cluden. Cemetery Sundays this weekend in our parish, says our first caller. And I would like to clean up my grandfather's headstone, which is marble, quite dirty, and the surround is concrete and bird droppings. Not sure which is more, bird droppings or concrete. Right. So it's more likely the, the surround is limestone as opposed... It could be concrete, but usually what happens is it's limestone. It's, it's stone as opposed to concrete. It's academic. But the... The thing you use on the marble cannot be used on... Sorry, the thing you use on concrete can't be used on marble. So you can get very specific headstone cleaner, which is can be used on marble or stone. Um, but very often, honestly, warm soapy water and a nylon pad or a bohemian blade scraper, if it's really bad, will do an awful lot with the marble. But if that's not enough, then use the headstone cleaner. It, it re, Particularly if it's white... If it's black marble, honestly, warm soapy water normally mm. does it. If it's white marble, it takes a bit more and then you're using the headstone cleaner. If it, if you're cleaning limestone, um, you can use the headstone cleaner. It is brilliant, but you might need to a couple of bottles. So then it gets a little bit more expensive. So, and if there is, the caller is referencing bird droppings, it could be the white lichen or lichen growing on the stone. And uh, the chlorine-based headstone cleaner will do that. But equally well, if you use a path and patio cleaner, because it's, you can't use... Pa- a path and patio cleaner combines, as a rule, two things. It combines a detergent for cleaning and an acid for breaking down all the dirt. But the great thing is you're mixing it with water. So if you get a litre of, heads- of path and patio cleaner, it costs you about a tenner, but it makes five litres. And now you have plenty to do your entire headstone. So in this particular case, what I would say is on the on the marble, use the chlorine-based headstone cleaner. And on the rest, use the path and patio cleaner. Or if you're doing it entirely a stone. So what you do is you kind of break the seal on the lichen by giving a rub with a little bit of fine sandpaper. Then put on the headstone cleaner or the patio cleaner. Give it, leave it for 20 minutes give it a a good scrub and wash it all off. And you will leave it very, 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 very clean and very much improved. If you felt, if it's limestone and you feel strongly about it, you could put on a sealer, path and patio sealer or water seal. And that makes the stone non-porous and now it stays clean infinitely longer. Now it's very easy to apply, but it only comes in a five litre container, which is between 30 and 40 euro. But having said that, the stone will remain clean infinitely longer because it's no longer absorbent. So it doesn't get the lichen, it doesn't get the green algae, it basically doesn't get dirty because it can't absorb anything. Um, And it stays slightly wet looking, which 
looks really well. It's slightly darker on the stone, ever so slightly, but it does do a great job in keeping the stone clean if that's what you want to do. That white lichen you mentioned, often it appears on roofs. Yes. What do you do then? Same thing. Uh, a rub of a, a fine sandpaper, a rub of a stiff brush to break the seal mm. and then put on your... You can use the path and patio cleaner. Once you wash it off properly, it's absolutely fine. Um, you can use a... Chlor- There's a thing called Farmer's Friend, which is very strong chlorine based blaze bleach type of product and that does a great job but the only thing is I, I never like to think of anybody spraying that up in the air so you'd have to pour it on you don't have to be spraying a chlorine based product you know you don't want it to go blind most of us don't want it to go blind so spraying it would have its benefits this morning <laughs> sitting across from you <laughs> that's not nice um, but on patios and so on it's the chlorine based farmer's friend is brilliant Parazone on limestone grave, if it's put on in damp conditions and maybe brush it on and then leave it. I found it effective, says a caller. Great. Yeah, well, the, the, there's, the chlorine in the parazone is, is, is effective. And I should have said, always do clean stone in wet weather. Always clean it when it's been wet for a while. Um, now, the other is more concentrated and if it's not that bad, great. The Paris owner will do fine. You can mix it three to one and put it on. Well, fingers crossed, all the forecasts seem to agree this weekend is going to be dry, oh, great. sunny. So it's not weather for doing great. that. Great. I'm just wondering what job should we do when the sun is shining this weekend? Oh, yeah. Well, look, anything out in the garden. So you don't power wash in this weather. You you power wash in wet weather. So maybe power wash today. Um, But I mean, it is then a time for killing weeds, for what else are you doing in the fine weather? Killing killing moss and killing algae. But if there's going to be no rain in the immediate future, if you put on the weed killer, is the plant going to draw it in? Um, there's so much water in the ground it probably will be fine to okay. be honest with you if the weather's good this weekend and is, is, is this bank holiday weekend? Yes. Oh great yes I will be spraying weed killer this weekend of various different types so I'll be spraying in the flower beds I'll be using the, the Roundup or Roundup generic in the flower beds to kill all the stuff that What's that active ingredient called? Bed. Um, I, I have a mental blank on it now Glyphosate, I think. <laughs> <laughs> or is it glyphosate? I'm not sure. <laughs> and then I'll be spraying the. I have a lot of clover in the in the lawn this year and last year. I didn't do it last year. I forgot. Just, just didn't get around to do it last year. So I'll be spraying a, a lawn weed killer and that. And once you wash everything out, people get fixated on keeping a sprayer for this and a sprayer for that. So when we're selling a sprayer, a, a knapsack sprayer, we always say two golden rules when you buy a sprayer. Number one, you empty it and wash it out every time you use it. Never store stuff in it. It settles in the... the Will is looking so guilty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> always so- empty it because it'll, it'll, it will settle in the sprayer and cause you problems. So yeah, empty the sprayer. sediment uh, down the bottom of that exactly. will probably block things. Correct, yeah. correct, correct. And wash it out with a little bit of washed up liquid, warm water, if you can. It just dramatically improves the life of the sprayer. And the, the second golden rule, which is equally important is loan it to no one. Very good policy. That really, really is. The number of times we get people coming in and they're carrying the sprayer in the door and they start by saying, I loan this to my neighbour, forward slash sister, forward slash brother, forward slash whatever, and got it back and it's not working. What is the best way to remove moss from tarmac? So use a moss killer. Uh, Loads of different ones out there. Best one we've come across is the drive clear, but there's loads of different ones out there. This is the weather for moss killer because the moss needs to be dry. So if you have moss that's saturated from the rain and you try and put on a chemical, hello, it's already saturated. That means it won't take in anything else. So if you get a dry day, put on the moss killer. Within four or five days, it'll be completely brown and crumbly and breaking down. And now you can go out with a stiff brush or a gentle power washing. So you should never aggressively, if you try to take live moss 
off tarmac. You'll have to nearly go at a needle jet to put on so much pressure to get it off and you're spreading the spores everywhere. If the moss has been killed with the moss killer and it's dead and crumbly, now you set a wide setting on the power washer and the, and the spray and you keep it well back and you're just really using it like a sweeping brush but the water is doing the work for you rather because I know you hate doing any physical work. Oh, so allergic. The, <laughs> the water will do the work for you. All right. It's 27 minutes past 10 in a moment. Let's find out what's happening in your area over the next few days. Events to go to, things to think about. Also, in an hour's time, if you need that knee replacement, and you've had how many, Brian? Two so far. Another one on the cards. Excellent. Well, you, Not really. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to go overseas to jump the waiting list. More on that in an That's bad. Time. Somebody who needs a knee replacement, jumping the waiting list, is, is, I think that's not nice. It's a metaphor. Mr. Fixes with Bright Ideas Lighting, Talbot Avenue, Athlone. Call in and see our impressive displays at Talbot Avenue, Athlone or see brightideas.ie. Brian Clunan is here from Clunan's Hardware in Tullamore until 11. And a little question about baldness coming up as well. I don't know. I didn't put it on the agenda. Don't give me that dirty look. No, you're not getting any dirty look. I am. I have become resigned to my baldness. Kath in Kilkenny. Good morning. Uh, Kath has an old mahogany wardrobe with woodworm. How do you get rid of the woodworm? And on a secondary question, what is the best way to keep a septic tank clean between emptying? So you, you actually don't want to keep it clean? You want to keep it dirty. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your case. Your <laughs> <laughs> so what, what keeps a septic, t- a septic tank active is the bacteria. So the, the problem is if people use too much antibacterial stuff, too much bleach in their toilets, you really shouldn't use any bleach in your toilets. Or if you have to use it, wipe it on and wipe it dry then with kitchen roll and dump the kitchen roll. You know, you're trying not to let any bacterial stuff or as little bacterial stuff down into the septic tank. Mm. That's a bit, that's really important. So if you have a traditional septic tank, then what you put, they have, they're emptying it. Um, after you empty it, put in one of the septic tank bacterial agents. So, um, Is that more effective than roadkill? Ah, uh, yeah, no, no, there is no comparison. I mean, there is obviously, there's a little bit of merit in roadkill, but not really because then you've all the bones in there as well and you've everything that. So, um, Septico, um, Cestlene, uh, there's a dozen different ones out there. Sorry, did you say septic ho? Septico. Septico. C O. Yes. Okay. Septico. Cestlene or any of these uh, anti or any of these bacterial enzyme based agents that make your septic tank work. So the likes of the Septico is a six month supply. So you just put it in once every six months, and it does genuinely make a huge, huge difference. So that was that's question part two one. Of the question. The part two, okay. Question one is about the old mahogany wardrobe with woodworm. Oh, yeah. Getting rid so of the woodworm. This is the time of the year to do this. So I would always say the easiest thing to do is get one of the uh get a bug bomb. And I would say it's worth creating a tent. So when I say a tent, I mean a couple of double bed sheets thrown over the wardrobe. And You need to put something on top of the wardrobe just to, like a tent pole, but I mean, I'm looking at your your very expensive looking espresso coffee mug. Something that height would be fine just to keep it up off the top of the wardrobe and then put in one of the bug bombs that you light um, and they're very, very effective because they get everywhere. The problem with the liquid is getting into the joints that you need to cover every little area. So, but I would also say, remember, if you have a wardrobe in your room with with woodworm holes in it that's where the woodworm ate their way out Mm. and will now look to lay fresh eggs somewhere else so you need to have a look at everything so if it's not a huge room get the bigger bug bomb which is 28 quid 24 22 something like that and do the entire room How far can woodworm travel to lay their eggs? They're pretty like like yourself they're pretty lazy so um, they'll only go a few metres All right. Wood Drive clear be harmful to dogs who walk on it constantly? No, not at all. What is drive clear? 
It's a biocide, but it's relatively benign. It doesn't kill weeds. It doesn't kill grass. It doesn't stain anything. Um, so, it, no, absolutely not. Ina asks if Gallup is a good weed killer. Yeah, so it's a generic roundup. It's it's an excellent weed killer. Remember the way any of the generic, we call them generic roundups, the active ingredient being? Glyphosate or glyphosate. We, yep. We're not sure. Yep. That word there. Um, I always get it wrong whenever I say. And, uh, you were calling it it's glyphosate a great, for years. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a great weed killer in that it enters into the leaves. It works its way down into the root system of the plant. Uh, so it's great to use in around shrubs and things because it only goes into the leaves and once you don't get it on the leaves you won't do any harms, harm to your shrub but remember it's, it's, it's not residual which is great if you're using it in the shrub beds but if you're using it on your gravel on your tarmac on your drive you better use especially this time of the year use a residual one like Pistol or Premisar or Destrol or any of those the ones if, particularly if you value your time or your health. Or your health, yeah. Glyphosate, and it's glyphosate, by the way, mm-hmm. has been associated with toxic effects on the nervous system. Okay. It's been seen as a possible carcinogen by the World Health Organization. And that's before you come to the environmental damage it can do. So consider as well the there are enzyme weed killers, acidic weed killers, whether they're as good or not. I'll let you tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what have we got? Um, can you use parazone on a grave? You had mentioned it earlier for limestone, but if it's not limestone, if it's marble, will it do damage? Just make sure you wash it off and make sure you only use the the, the basic, simple Bleach, you know, don't go for extra thick, don't go for foamy action, don't go for lime scale removing. They they can all cause problems if they if they remain in any way on the grave for any length of time. On What's the, the stone. most economical option? So, do you buy a headstone cleaner, or do you go with a generic bleach? It depends how bad it is, really. Um, the headstone cleaner is a tenner. And it's usually enough to do, certainly enough to do the entire headstone, depending on no how bad it is. If it's a plinth and it's bad, um, I would say the, the best, the most economical, if it's not marble, the most economical is the little bottle of patio cleaner because it does a great job without, with, and it only costs a tenner and it makes five litres. Are you afraid of snails? No. Caller well, says... I've never eaten them, but no. Actually, they're quite tasty. Are they? if they're oh, I have eaten them. I have. Sorry, I tell a lie. I have. We're going on a tangent now, but there's a company in Carlo. That's right. They have like chili flavored snails and garlic flavored snails. Now, I think you'll find that all the flavor is in the additive as opposed to the snail. I don't think the snail is really tastes of anything. I think it's all got to do with the garlic, the chili, the you know whatever. Well, obviously, okay. but still, it's tasty. Okay. Shall we ask the question? Oh, I so, didn't know what there was a question. <laughs> Listener says, we have hundreds of snails climbing the outside walls of the house and my wife is freaking out. Obviously, it's my responsibility because I'm chief snail hunter in this house. (laughs) Yes, I think there are. Husbands would identify with things like that. What's attracting snails? Um, Yeah, the... Snails, in fine weather, they, they do climb things. They want to get to areas that are moist, so into shelter. That's why you'll often see them tucked away in, in areas like that. So what you need, to, well, obviously slug pellets will work. Um, anything that dehydrates them will take care of the problem. So, I mean, you could put, you could put, you know, the wood pellets that you use in your pellet burner, but then the problem is when that gets wet, you have to clean it all up again afterwards. You know, the handiest thing here is probably just because it's so cheap, buy a bag of um, the big, big bags of salt that you get, which you can use in your dishwasher, you can use in your water softener, the granular one, not the cubed one. So if you buy a 25 kg bag of salt, it'll cost you less than a tenner. And you can just put on 
on the ground, at the base of the wall, the whole way around the house, and it dehydrates the slugs. They won't climb the wall, they'll die. And it'll also wash away in the rain. So it'll be gone, gone when the season is over, as opposed to the wood pellets, which would be a mess when it mm. gets wet. They all expand and so on. So I think the salt is the way to, way to go. Slug pellets are salt, depending on how big an area. If it's not a huge area, a, a tub of slug pellets will definitely do the problem. And the, all the slug pellets now tend to be organic. So, you know, they're not going to be harmful in any way. And uh, otherwise, a bag of salt. Frank in Strad Valley wants people to take note. If you use Roundup on the flower bed, be careful because it will kill the flowers as well as the weeds. Yeah, so as I said, it goes into the leaves. So once you don't get it on the flower leaves or the leaves of the flowers, you will be okay. But it's Be surgical normally, in your application. Be surgical in your application. And it's normally in around shrubs, which the, the foliage tends to be higher that I would be using it. He would also suggest clover in the lawn feeds the lawn with nitrogen naturally and pollinators love the flower it produces. Jobs for a sunny bank holiday weekend should also include real DIY like painting gates, sheds (laughs) and fences. And relaxation. And since you're a volunteer, Frank, I have just such a job (laughs) if you fancy coming to Clombaloke. Will, ask Brian how to get rid of shrews from the house. These are like baby mice. I think an expert would... Uh, disagree but anyway they well, are they, essentially small rodents yeah the problem is they're smaller than mice and a lot of the ordinary mouse traps won't catch them so um, you can use the the catch alive traps because they well th- if they're very sensitive you can use those but the the best trap for that is the I see frankly trying to think the brand a quick set a quick snap they're a black plastic trap made by endomice and they're not weight related so 99% of traps the mouse goes in the the weight of the mouse sets off the trap and catches them with these ones the bait they're pre-baited they're in a, the bait is in a little hole and when the mouse goes into the hole his body lifts up something and sets it off and they're really effective because the mouse is well into it it's not just at the edge to set it off, he's well into it and it's nothing to do with his weight. And they're, they're, baited, they're pre-baited with peanut butter, which is a very attractive bait for both the shrews and the mice. Brian Clunan is here from Clunan's Hardware in Tullamore until 11. Got a question for him? You can text or indeed WhatsApp 083 30 10 103. Mr. Fix It with Bright Ideas Lighting Talbot Avenue at Lone. Your garden and patio lighting specialist. Get the right advice before you start. Bright Ideas Talbot Avenue at Lone. Billy Morris in Port Arlington. Thank you very much for your message. We shall not call it aloud, but it did give us a laugh, <laughs> suffice to say. You can send a voice note to 083 30 10 103 if you want to tease out a question with Brian. Well, will you ask... Um Ask him, um, my washing machine, um, a nail guy in and I cut some of the rubber. It's a hot point uh, washing machine, 9 kg, 9 uh, kg, yeah. Um, will you ask him, can it be replaced? Where, how can I replace it? The rubber, just around the rubber. So a punctured rubber can cause problems in fairness? It did, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> did it? yes, ah, that's yes. Okay. That's really more information than I needed. <laughs> Um, Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Um, yeah, so you can replace the rubber. You go to someone like Expertise who keeps spare parts. Now, really important, you get the make, which she has, and the model number. So usually on the back of the machine, little silver plate. You know, it's on every electrical appliance, and it'll have the make and model number. And go to, I think, presume they're online. I know they have a shop in Tullamore. I presume they're online as well and you will get a new rubber seal. Uh, it's usually half a dozen little self-tapping screws that keep it in. So if you are handy, you'll do it yourself. Otherwise, you get the domestic appliance engineer, also known as the washing machine man or woman. The guy. The guy or woman who does it. Uh, but it's not it's not that difficult, genuinely, um, uh, once you have the correct rubber. And it's like a lot of these things, once you have the correct 
replacement part in your hand, it all becomes a lot easier to work out how it works because you can see the, the new one, you can see where the holes are. Often it's easier to see all that in the replacement new one before it goes in and then a lot becomes clearer on how it works. Settle a domestic dispute. I want to paint my teak front door black, but my husband insists it's a sin to paint over good teak and it'll also peel off eventually because of the oil in the teak. Who's right? He's wrong and he's wrong. So years ago, he might have been right in that uh, years ago, you had to use a thing called aluminium primer if you were painting a hardwood. But nowadays, it's moved on so much, you don't need to do that at all. And look, a tea front door would be considered today quite dated. So it is a transformation. Like if you paint it, um, and particularly if you're a bit ambitious, if it's a front door, I look, my own front door is black, so, you know, I won't say... I go, but you can be as ambitious as you want. You can paint your front door any colour you want now. It's all mixed in shop, in the, in the shop when you go in. You can pick any colour you want. And the other beauty is, so years ago, this would have been a primer, an aluminium primer, which was horrible to work with, like yourself, and then followed by an undercoat and then followed by two coats of a finish. So... Uh, He's proud Nowadays. of himself there. You see the <laughs> very contented look on that little face. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the way you hate getting caught. It's the look in your face that makes it all Keep going, worthwhile. keep going. So nowadays there's so many one coat, well, they're never one coat if you're putting on a complete new paint, but two coats of paint, Super Deck, Universal, any of these one, all-in-one paints, they're absolutely brilliant and they flow really easily. They, people who have never painted before if they use this paint, they rave about it because it's so easy to use. And just remember, if you're painting a door like that, you're going to give two coats of paint to the door, two coats of paint to the frame. So if the door is tight anywhere, give it a good sanding before you start, rather than find you've painted on the, the, the four coats, well, the two coats and the two coats meeting each other. And the thickness then of four coats of paint would mean it'll be tighter again. So give a good sanding to anywhere that's tight to close in the first place. Marion in Portleash has a solid fuel stove. Last year there was a chimney fire and unfortunately the glass is marked. She's tried a few things to get it off without success. Everything including cold ashes. Is there anything you would try, Brian? So the two things I would try would be a bohemian blade scraper on the glass. So a bohemian blade scraper will, will almost always do it. Uh, and failing that, what you can try is oven cleaner paste. So oven cleaner paste will work. But what you do is you brush on the oven cleaner paste, you cover it in cling film, you leave it for an hour, mm. and then come back with your bohemian blade scraper or a plastic, like a credit card, a windscreen scraper, you know, plastic windscreen scraper, one of those things, and it'll nearly always take it off without any problem whatsoever. All righty. Now, let's go to another voice note. What can I do and to see prevent what the problem is? I'm just wondering if Brian could help me out. I have a problem with my ceiling in my bathroom. Now, there's no mould coming through or anything in the bathroom. Uh, just on the top of the ceiling in the corner, and uh, like the timber kind of bit around uh, around the ceiling in your bathroom it's kind of the, where there's little holes coming through and there's like little mushrooms starting to grow inside of the bathroom on the ceiling and i'm just wondering what can i do to prevent that or what's the next step to it yeah. mushrooms in the bathroom are not that's, good that's not good um look you'd probably just want to look at well, let's just try something first. So get a fungicidal solution. They'll all talk about mixing them five to one or three to one or whatever. So scrape off everything, put on the fungicidal solution neat and just see what happens. If it continues, then you're probably talking about getting a structural engineer to just come and look and see, have you got a dry rot or wet rot structural problem? But if you find that brushing on the fungicidal solution neat takes care of the problem, well then, happy days. It was minor enough and it's it's sorted. So what you would be doing is at the start of every winter, brush on some of the, which of them, maybe the best of them would be the, the sand tracks one, but brush it on neat instead of uh, diluting it. Hmm. We have two million mice in our attic, or so swears my wife. Is there a poison that doesn't 
let the mice smell afterwards? No. Nature does... Decomposition is decomposition. Exactly. The, the, if the mouse dies up there, if it dies up there, it's not too bad because it's in the attic and there's probably no one living in the mm. attic. But the problem is you don't know where they're going to die. They come down and they die in the wall cavity. probably nobody living in the attic? Well, it could be <laughs> is it tough. the case that you have to check from time to it time that somebody's squat? <laughs> it is a, there are converted, converted <laughs> attics. So sometimes people live... You know, in a converted <laughs> attic. So there's probably no one living in the attic is technically correct. Fine. Um, look, I'd always say just use traps. If it's My policy is if they're in the house, use traps. If it's outside, you can use poison. But you don't want the smell of a dead mouse in your house. So there are all sorts of fallacies that... Well, no, no that's not true. Mice that take the, 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 the common poisons nowadays... Uh, they do get thirsty before they die. But a mouse actually never can go its whole life without ever drinking. A rat will drink water, actual water. It needs to drink water. A mouse can go its whole life without ever drinking, you know, water from a puddle, water from something. It can suck enough moisture out of the timber in the attic, the condensation from the timber in the attic, that it will survive without ever drinking you know, a, mm. a little bit of actual water that you and I would consider drinking water. So they might never leave the attic. They rarely, but they equally well might be down in the wall cavity and then there's a smell in the house, which is not nice. We have lots of jokes relating to rubbers and Mick in Tullamore, thank you for yours. It's unfortunately before the watershed, <laughs> so we will consign them to the text machine for now. And uh, one person suggesting ducks if you've got a problem with slugs. Ducks seem to like eating ah, them. Ah, great. And then you get the eggs as well. Yeah. You'll find Brian Clunan at Clunan's Hardware in Tullamore. Mr. Fixes with Bright Ideas Lighting, Talbot Avenue Athlone. Call in and see our impressive displays at Talbot Avenue Athlone or see brightideas.ie.